the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he that hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest. Might have to turn this down a little bit. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest. God knows where we're living. Amen. He knows what the thermostat reads. Amen. (laughs) In our heart. Come on. Hallelujah. I mean, can you imagine a pastor getting a letter like this to read to his church? Huh? Amen. And the angel of the church, that's the leader. Under the leader of the church, pastor, of Ephesus, write these things, say that he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works. That's enough to put people to ducking. I mean, some folks won't dive under the seat. You read that from God. The thing about it is, uh, he's going to tell on them. He's not only going to tell on them right in their own home church, he's going to tell the whole world what they've been doing. That's the way the judgment's going to be. Amen. I know thy works. It's a good thing God knows our works. Because he said, I know thy labor and thy patience. Usually when the Lord uses the word patience, it has to do with suffering, particularly uh, tribulation and persecution. Amen. And, and God said, I know thy works, I labor in thy patience. I, I appreciate Sister Rosemary fixing us some prayer cloths. That's a big job, you know. That's a big job. She's probably got blisters. From making that many prayer cloths. I appreciate Brother Stanley for putting the door back on the restroom down there, girls. It's not to swing on, neither. Amen. It's not to push, but one way. Huh? And them restrooms are not to be cut up in any way. The Lord knows what you're doing in there. Huh? Amen. He knows about you swinging them doors. And uh, chasing each other around and, and goofing off in the house of God. Amen. And you get to run in the house of God and you hit these doors like I've seen some play and hit them bars on them doors. You can tear them up. Big old kid running in church. Hit them bars on them doors and, and uh, uh, knock something off a door. Amen. God knows. God knows when you... Uh, messing around, goofing off, and tearing stuff up around the house of God. Amen. He knows those things. I know thy works, I labor thy patience, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience for my name's sake, and hast labored, and hast not faded. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against. How much? Does it really matter? Are we going to be saved anyhow if we don't correct it? He said, repent or else I'll take away your candlestick. I'll I'll take away your light. Amen. I have somewhat against thee. Thou hast left thy first love. God knows where the thermostat is. At your house. He knows what you love more than anything else. Huh? Amen. Listen to this. The angel of the church of Pergamos right? I know thy works. And the man that says it has got a sharp sword with two edges. Whew. Amen. I know where thou dwellest. I know right where you're living. I know the level you're living on. I know 
about Satan's seat. I know where that is. I've got a few things against you, he said. Boy, I mean, it's time to start ducking under the seat again. Time to start ducking for cover. It's time to put your coat over your head. Uh, 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 Lily uh, Isaacs, uh, uh, she was a Jew when she came to Brother Cook's church. She was so ashamed and embarrassed at being in a Pentecostal church that she sat in church with her coat over her head. If a lot of folks knew the Lord's going to tell on them, they wouldn't show up <laughs> to put a coat over their head. Huh? Amen. Thou hast to do- them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Some of your preachers is getting out and left field. And 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 uh, I, you, you, you're going to have to repent. You got the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Uh, you know what the Nicolaitans is, don't you? Amen. That's that's loose in the middle and both ends too. Amen. Hey. Amen. Uh, you know what Balaam did? He taught Balak how to cast a stumbling block. He was a bad example. He knew, and for money's sake, he actually conspired to get Balak to cause the young women to have a dance near the camp of Israel. And he knew if those boys started looking. And those boys got curious. He may be Katie bar the door, and God would turn against his people because he's committing fornication. Amen. And he did. And 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 thousands died and, and God said you got the same spirit in the church. Amen. You got the spirit of Balaam. And you got the doctor of the Nicolaitine. Uh, they had that up here in, in Ephesus too. Amen. And uh, he said, Repent or else I'll come quickly and fight against them with a sword of my mouth. Amen. The angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, saith, uh, saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, he can burn right through the facade on the outside. See right through you. Knows what you're thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. I know thy works. They had some good things. They really did. I know thy works. I charity. And God puts that high on the totem pole. Greatest of these is charity. Thy service. Amen. They was a giving church. Anywhere you see that word service, it means giving. They were serving God by giving to those in need. Therefore, they performed a service. When Paul was taking up an offering for the poor saints at Jerusalem and and sent one of the uh, young preachers, Timothy, uh, uh, forth to gather up the offering because he said he's got the right kind of a spirit and he he, he cares for your state. And and, uh, he said, help him in this service. Usually where you see that word service, it means giving. And faith. They were a faith church, if you please. We like it when God commends us, don't we? And thy patience. They were a church that in, uh, that would go through trials and tribulations and, and, and troubles. Amen. And, and thy works. And he said, The last to be more than the first. Your works have increased and you're doing more than you've ever done. Is he satisfied? Notwithstanding. Boy, it's a big word. We didn't have it down in Arkansas. I'm not sure I know what it means now. Amen. Notwithstanding. Nevertheless. Amen. I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest the woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Oh, boy. I mean, Jezebel is turning red as a beet. 
Amen. I mean, she is embarrassed. She is ready to cut off the preacher's head, but the preacher can't help it. The poor old leader, amen, he can't help it. He got the letter from John, and John got it from the Lord, and now, amen, it's Katie by the door. Look out, Jezebel. Here it comes. Amen. Oh, it still needs to be read today because a lot of our churches are full of them. I mean, I don't know what you'd have to do to look any more like Jezebel than a lot of our professed Pentecostal churches, in fact, most of them in Hamilton. I don't know what else you'd have to do to look like Jezebel. Amen. I mean, anything goes, nothing is barred. Amen. And I mean, they can shout right on. Amen. They'll outshout you if you don't watch it. Amen. Brother Oakley's telling about that sister nobody shouted, she got healed. I've seen a whole bunch of them shout and didn't get healed. Amen. It's faith taking hold of God. Amen. I believe in shouting. I like it. I mean, there ain't nothing like. Amen. I was listening to... uh one of the uh, electronic uh, boys preached the other day, and he was preaching on love, and he said, Love is not an emotion. And I thought to my soul, what in the world do you think it is if it's not an emotion? Amen. I mean, if there's any emotion in the world, it's love. If there's a built-in emotion in the human frame, it's love. There's no thrill greater than love's thrill. Amen. Praise God. He said it's not an emotion. How stupid can a preacher that's supposed to be learned get to get on a radio of the potential of millions worldwide? Amen. Say, love is not an emotion. Amen. Incidentally, I told you about Swindoll saying the Lord only performed 38 miracles the other day. And I told my wife, I said, oh boy, I got to hollering at him. Amen. And uh, the next day, he had to correct it. He got so much email, and the last chapter of John was a scripture he got quoted to him the most, uh, that if all that was done had been wrote in a book, the world itself couldn't contain the books. And he confessed he was wrong. Big preachers with blind spots. Amen. You know why MacArthur said love is not an emotion? Because he ain't got any emotion. He claims love, but he ain't got any more than any other sinner. Amen. If he had love, he would know it was an emotion. Ooh, I got love like a river. I mean, what else is the inspiration for the songs that we sing? I got joy like a river. I got love like a river. Hallelujah. Love is an emotion. There's no joy like love. Praise God. Hallelujah. But oh boy, you know the reason they uh, have blind spots? It's because they, they're carnal. Amen. They, they're, they're so carnal they can't see their nose in front of their face. Amen. Oh, help me. Amen. Call herself a prophetess. You know what these prophetess do, don't you? These Jezebelian prophets, they tell you what you want to hear. And they would never read anything like this to a mixed congregation because it puts them on the spot. Amen. Oh, she called herself promised to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things offered to idols. Here's the way it goes. I've heard them say it. Well, go ahead if you just will be to do it. Pray through afterwards. God will forgive you. You ever hear it? Amen. That's Jezebel talk. Amen. He will. And thank God he does. But he even has scars that we put in his hands still. You go on, 
You do as you please. You take that dive. Huh? You say, well, I'm going to do it. And you'll have scars the rest of your life, even if God does forgive you. Drive a nail in the door, and the preacher said, every time you do a sin, drive a nail in the door. And so a little boy drove a nail in the door. Pretty soon the door was full of nails. He said, now, we're going to take a hammer called grace and pull out all the nails. And that's what God does. But the little boy looked up and saw hundreds of nail holes still in the door. Huh? Try it on your new Cadillac. Every time you sin, drive a nail in the door. Amen. Grace covers it all. Sure. Pull the nails out now. Amen. Your good Cadillac ain't worth near as much as it was. Try running it across the block. See how much it brings with all them nail holes in the door. Huh? Yes, you can do wrong and get forgiveness, and thank God we can. Amen. But uh, can we repair the damage? That is the question. Depends on how deep we go, how far we go. Amen. I know thy works, praise God. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she didn't do it. What's he going to do to this bunch of liberals? I'll cast her into a bed with them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of her their deeds. And listen to this. This is enough to make you tremble now. I'll kill her children with death. Those children that she was so concerned about not running off from church with a wholeness message, God's going to kill them anyhow. That's what he said. Those rebellious kids that snicker and grin when you talk about old-time religion and faith and giving up the world living for God. Amen. I've seen them. I've even heard them try to teach Sunday school class. They stood up there with a silly grin on their face all the way through Sunday school class. They didn't want to look like some holy Joe, but they was teaching Sunday school. Churches full of them across the land. I'm telling you, this was uh, almost 40 years ago that this old boy in Mount Carmel, Illinois, was teaching Sunday school class, and it was doubtful as he even saved. Amen. Hey, amen. God's him going to kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know. God knows, and after a while, the whole, whole bunch is going to know. All the churches will know that I am He which searcheth the reins and the heart, and I'll give every one of you, unto every one of you, according to your works. Amen. And the angel of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seventh spirit to God, I know thy works. I've got the seven spirits of God, but I know that you ain't got any. <laughs> You just got a name that you live and you're dead. And you know what? They were satisfied with that. Someone has likened this Sardonian church as the, as, as the church of the Protestant Revolution. How that they came part of the way out, but they didn't come all the way out. Luther came part of the way out, but he didn't uh, uh, relinquish all the Catholic uh, uh uh, rituals and, 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 and brought a whole lot of the ritualism out with him. And sometimes it's hard to shake a lot of that stuff. Amen. They had a name that they lived, but they were dead. They didn't come all the way out. Amen. And, uh, praise God. John Wesley 
uh, even tried preaching the gospel as a member of the Church of England in good standing, amen, and even was a do-gooder missionary in Georgia and almost got martyred by the Indians and almost got arrested by the governor of the state of Georgia. Amen. Because he refused to give communion to his former fiancé because he thought she was still in love with him and she was uh, committing hypocrisy and so he refused to give communion. You know, why in the world would John Wesley do a stupid thing like that? Because John wasn't saved yet. He was just a do-gooder preacher in the church of England. Amen. Uh, Amen. She would have went back to England with him. He had to take uh, uh, roads back to the ship uh, uh, that uh, uh, were uh, shortcuts and through the woods so as not to be accosted and and arrested by the, the governor because they was out to arrest him. Amen. One biographer said that she... Uh, he made the second trip down the gangplank uh, to get her to go back to England with him and, and marry him. Uh, and she said, no, you've got a ministry. And, and, and she wouldn't go. Amen. And he sailed back to England and didn't even get right with God until his heart was strangely warmed in a Moravian prayer meeting. Amen. Most of the Lutherans in the Church of England, amen, just had a name that they lived. As well as the Church of England. Amen. They just had a name that they lived, but they were dead. Amen. Many of the reformers, uh, amen, just had a name that they lived, uh, but they were dead. God, who has the seven spirits of God, knows if we've still got it. God, who is well acquainted with the Holy Ghost, knows very well if we are in any shape, uh, praise God, to accommodate the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, you just got a name to live, that you live and are dead, and most churches today are like that. And it's getting worse by the day. Amen. They want to look good in the eyes of the world, won't look good in the eyes of the movement. They're counting nickels and noses, they're statistic conscious. Amen. And they got all kinds of church growth programs going on. Amen. And what are these church growth programs doing for churches that's got a name that they live and are dead? Amen. They are proselytizing a whole bunch more that's got a name that they live and are dead. Just exactly like their parents. Like father, like son. Amen. Your church is not going to climb very much higher than your pastor, and chances are they'll come just a skosh underneath. Amen. Uh, 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 once in a while we have a man of God, uh, amen, I will aspire to great things of God, uh, amen, and climb higher than the leader. Amen. But they love to have it so. Amen. I asked the lady in the music store in West Plain, Missouri, as I thumbed through the records and I couldn't find anything that had any life to it. And I said, have you got any spirit? Amen. And go in and act like we do in most churches, especially the non-Pentecostal ones that don't know anything about it. And you start clapping your hands and hollering, Amen, Hallelujah, and praise the Lord. They'll turn around and look at you because you'll stick out like a sore thumb. Woo! <laughs> We used to go to all the revivals in the country. Amen. I had a carload of young folks in my old Ford. And amen. We went up to the Baptist revival. We all piled out of that old Ford after I backed it off into the ditch trying to turn around and had to get a record to pull it out. And we finally got to church. And amen. We, we, we was going early enough that we could back into the ditch and get pulled out before we was late. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And we was in a Baptist church in a revival meeting and our kids was stomping their feet a little bit and clapping their hands just li- not much. And everybody turned around and was looking at them. 
Amen. Why? Because the average run-of-the-mill church today has a name that it lives and they're dead. They can get in a newspaper, get a column, a half a page, free of charge. Amen. But they're dead. They talk big and live low. Amen. Hey, praise God. God says, I know right where you're living. And you got to repent. Or else I'll come and take away your candlestick. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. Here's a good note in all of this. You know, the church of Smyrna, he said, I know thy works. Amen. And he said, I know that thou hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake and hast labored. Amen. And, and uh, hast not fainted. Praise God. Hey, amen. He... He knows our works and tribulation, and he said, I know thy poverty to the church of Smyrna, but in parentheses he says, but thou art rich. Isn't it wonderful when poverty down here is translated riches in heaven? They'd given up all, gone, praise God, lost it all, endured the spoiling of their goods for God, amen, and they was poor as Job's turkey, hallelujah, but brother, God had it laid up for them in heaven. He said, the way I look at it, you're rich. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Here's another good church, 7th verse, chapter 2, 3. And the angel to the church, the angel of the church of the Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I've set before you an open door. Amen. That's why when Mike called me out in Virginia and told me the doors is open everywhere, I said, go through them, Mike. Go through them. God's the one that opens them doors. Amen. Go through them. Praise God. Hallelujah. It takes God to open the doors for us. Hallelujah. I was wondering out loud to Brother Butler why a certain brother just couldn't seem to make it. I said, I just don't understand Brother, Bur brother Butler. He's a good man. He said, well, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, it takes God to honor us. If God don't help us, we're hurting. If God don't help us, they can make you the state evangelist for six months of the good old church of God. But after that, somebody else going to come in and take your place. Amen. Boy, I've had them give me that pitch. We'll make you the state evangelist of the assemblies of God in this, in this section. Amen. That lasts about six months, and then if you don't come out to, uh, with some fire and, and uh, uh, God don't honor you and God don't help you, amen, there's another boy that they're going to give the same pitch, and he's going to take your place. I've seen them change denominations overnight, thinking maybe a denomination will help me. That's not what does it. It's the anointing. It's the unction. That's the only thing that'll do it. Praise God. Pray through. Praise God. Do your memory work. Memorize something worth telling. Praise God. Don't be a fool like some preachers say, I don't read no books. You don't have to tell us. Amen. We already know it. Praise God. We know a dummy when we see one. Read, 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 read everything you can get a hold of. Amen. Some things I read to learn how to preach. And some things I read okay, to learn how not to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. Read, read, read. Hallelujah. The Filipino uh, interpreters have a hard time... Uh, <coughs> interpreting for us because of our uh, idioms that we use and because of our terminologies that we use. They're not used to it. And I read the Manila Gazette. I read the 
papers that they get in the Philippines. And they have the same idioms that we've got. The disc jockeys on the radio. It's their goal to be just as much like American disc jockeys as possible. So they use the same idiom. All those preachers got to do is invest a nickel in an English newspaper or find one that somebody's already read and read, 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 read. Amen. And then they'll know. Amen. You know what's wrong? They're too lazy to read. They think they're too poor. But the Bible said give attendance to reading. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. We need to read good books. Praise God. And if we'll read good books, hallelujah. And before you go off on a tangent, following after some error, some false doctrine, you might ought to ask me what I think about it. Amen. I can save you a whole lot of trouble, a whole lot of heartache, and a whole lot of dishonor before you get off on a tangent. Amen. Uh, praise God. Uh, you may think you already know, but you don't. Amen. There's a whole lot I can tell you. There's a whole lot I can help you with. Amen. And you may think you're already an accomplished critic. Amen. And you can tear the preacher's message apart and know how he done it wrong and what he didn't do. Uh, but there is just no demand for critiques. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He just sat at the feet of Jesus. Amen. I've run across a whole bunch of know-it-alls uh, through the years. Uh, and you know what? They didn't get off the ground. They didn't get to first base. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, there ain't no demand for them. We've got to know as God would have us to know. He that thinketh he knoweth something, don't know anything as he ought to know, the Bible says. Amen. And uh, so uh, we need to be taught. We need to learn. We need to set at the feet of Jesus. Amen. I know my works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. God opens a door for you. L.L. L. Collins can't shut it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't even want to try. Hallelujah. Years ago, a brother stood behind this pulpit after going another way and joining another movement other than free holiness. Amen. And he said, they didn't help me, so I'll try them and see if they'll help me. They ain't helped him all that much. Amen. Uh, they helped him lose his whole family to liberalism, worldliness. Amen. It's dangerous to follow after a bunch of stuff. It's dangerous to take your family into a situation like that. Amen. I know a half a dozen that have took their family, and now they want out, and they'd like to be out, and they'd like to come back to the old paths, but they can't bring their family with them. They've already lost them. Amen. Hallelujah. Go through those doors. Amen. No man can shut it. Listen to this. Thou hast a little strength. He that has promised power to the church, if they'd seek God, amen. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He said, you've got a little strength. You know what? He didn't say that about a bunch of these churches. He didn't say that about the Sardis church. He said, you're just satisfied with looking good. Good PR, public relations. And that's all you're looking for. Amen. Hey, no matter how much we talk, no matter how much we advertise, no matter how many church go seminars we have, amen, if we ain't got the goods, what good are we doing, people? If we encompass heaven and earth to make one more proselyte, 
and we make him twofold more a child of hell. How in the world could they do that? Because it's hardest thing in the world to win a church member to God. Amen. I asked Wes Dehart, where you go to church, Wes? I was pastoring at Alto Pass, Illinois, and I had the mayor of the town in my church. He was on the board. Only church I ever pastored, I had the mayor in church. Of course, amen, they could have got two Alto Pass populations on one jumbo jet. So he wasn't the mayor of too much. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, I asked Wes Dehart sitting in Roy Hickam. Roy Hickam was a mayor, had the general store downtown. He was also one of the trustees on the, on the board. Amen. And he was my friend. And, and uh, <clears throat> I said, Wes, where are you going to church? He said, I go to the Baptist church. Well, I was friend of the Baptist preacher, and I didn't want to proselyte one of his members. And I said, he said, when I go, and I, I looked over at Roy and some boy, and I said, don't sound like he goes anywhere much, does it? That was Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Saturday night, Wes went out with the boys. There was Jim D. Hart and Jack and... Uh, bunch of the guys that we we all go down to Kentucky Dam and since they was going I'd ride with them and that that's a bunch I was with when I went down to Kentucky Dam that night in March and they had melted down 200 pounds of plumber's lead to make them big old eight ounce sinkers to rake the bottom of that swift water when he opened them spillways below Kentucky Dam they all catch those big ones amen I didn't have much money, and I had a Zebco 33 with a hollow fiberglass rod, amen, at a 30-pound test. That's as big as I could get on that Zebco 33, and I'd already hung all my sinkers in the rock soaking, lost all my sinkers, and I was down to a spark plug in the power grabs. And it wasn't even dark yet. And we were going to fish all night. Amen. About 7.30 in the evening, with my spark plug and a pair of grabs, I hung into a big one, and everybody hollers, Whee! That lets everybody know we got one. Amen. Hey! Amen. You mean you holler, and, and a hoop in church, and, and shout amen, and get loud, yes sir. Amen. If a man's got a right to get emotional about catching a spoonbill cat, Amen. We got a right to get emotional about the Son of God who's coming again. Can you say amen? Amen. I hung in and I wrestled that spoonie over to the side and them boys helped me. Amen. Get that big old spoon filled Bill Cat in. Amen. And he, with his tail reaching the ground, he struck me right here. He was a big one. But that ain't all, Brother Parker. I hung into another one shortly. And them old boys was throwing them eight ounces out there and they was fishing as hard as they could. They knew they was out there because I was catching them. But my spark plug wasn't going under them like theirs was. It was getting just right. The right depth. Amen. A spark plug wasn't a bad thing below Kentucky Dam because those shad go through those turbines and tear them all to pieces and they come out white pieces of meat. So that white spark plug is not too bad an idea if me and the black boys was the only ones that used them. Amen. And I had to use them because I was poor. And that's why they used them. Amen. And there's plenty of them on the rocks. Water go down. You can get all the tackle you wanted of the cheap kind. Amen. Hey, all you had to do is reach down and pick it up. Amen. And after it was all said and done that night, I'd caught seven spoonbills. That's what they wanted to catch. And you held them up. They struck me right here. Amen. With a tail dragging the ground. I couldn't even drag them up the bank. I didn't even know how. I knew how to skin a catfish. Amen. But old man, D. Hart, he told me, he said, you get that gristle out of there? I said, I didn't. 
know anything about any gristle. He said, you got to get that gristle out of that backbone and run that fish. And so he got down there to the paraplars and he got the pulling it, something in that fish's backbone. And finally he got a hold of it. It looked like he pulled six foot of gristle out of that spoon bill's backbone. Amen. He just kept coming out. And we had to do every one of them like that. And I went back to Alto Pass and traded all them catfish for produce. And sold them on the street because they didn't have any bones in them. I didn't like spoonbill too well. I liked the other kind better. Amen. So that's what everybody was looking for. Amen. And they was willing to pay the price for it. And the produce man that, that service stores around there, he traded me tomatoes for catfish. Amen. Hey, praise God. God knows where we are. He's able, praise God, to make a way for us. He's able. I told Wes Dehart, that was Wednesday. Amen. I talked to him about the Lord and quit. Just stopped short. Saturday night, Wes came in. Went to his upstairs room. His mom heard him. Went to bed about midnight. One o'clock, she heard Wes struggling. And the time she got up, Wes was already dead with a heart attack. I was the last preacher that talked to him about God Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. It was Wes's last fishing trip, and he didn't know it. Amen. Go through them doors, boy. Go through them doors. Amen. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, power. In fact, in my Bible here, this this uh, uh, job that Brother Jack King gave me years ago, this Nelson Bible, amen, Jack King gave me, I mean, 25 years ago at least, and I've still got it, still preaching out of it. Amen. It's got a notation here about that strength. It means power. You got a little power. You wasn't satisfied just to have a name. But you live. Amen. And thou hast kept my word. What does it mean, keep his word? It means to obey it. It means to do what it said. Amen. When it says, don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, quit cussing. Amen. Dr. Laura, uh, she claims to be a, a, a Jew and helped the rabbi write a book on the Ten Commandments. Amen. And uh, she says, we do hell and damn on this program. But that's corrupt communication as far as I'm concerned. When you use those four-letter words and those mince those, amen. Obey my word. Hallelujah. Did what it said. You can't separate the word from Jesus. You can't separate Jesus from the word. I'm the angel of the church of Laodiceans write these things, saith the amen. Faithful and true witness. How many want the Lord to tell the truth about you? Hold up your hand. He will. He will. Amen. He's going to be a faithful and a true witness. I know thy works. If thou art neither hot nor cold, I would that thou art one or the other, cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I'm going to puke you up. Well, it's not quite that brash. It says I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. That backslidden preacher made that whale sick, and he vomited him up. Amen. What's wrong with you, old whale? Amen. I got this disobedient preacher on board, and I got to get rid of him. Amen. Ooh-wee. Amen. He, 
He had Jonah in a good location, brother. All the signboards was pointing to Nineveh. When that whale got done with him, he was slightly yellow. Amen. He was probably like uh, uh, Brian Peters when they was holding revival down in Florida. Amen. For the folks that uh, uh, she later became the the wife of Brother Ralph Cox. Amen. She talked with a little bit stronger English accent back then. Amen. And one day Brian piped up after he heard the way she talked. Well, he curled up his nose a little bit and looked across the table. His dad said, is she Chinese? Amen. I can imagine when they saw Jonah come into town, hey, we got a Chinaman. No, he'd just been down there amongst the digestive juices of that whale. Amen. And the bile from that whale had turned him slightly yellow. Amen. And somebody else said, he smells kind of fishy to me. Amen. Hey, praise God, but by the time he got done preaching, it didn't matter if he smelled like fish. Whew. It didn't matter if he'd been vomited up by a whale. He won a whole city to God and didn't even like his own revival. Amen. Amen. Sit down on the hill, watch God destroy him, and God saved him instead. God caused a gourd vine to grow up over his head to shade him and, and, and let him know he cared and, amen, and, 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 and Jonah sat under his gourd vine and pouted because God sent him a revival. God heard him when they fasted. Amen. He wouldn't let the children eat. It was, it was worse probably than little Dara when she said, when they was fasting, she said, uh, I'm so hungry, mommy, can I just go slow? She, she had, uh, amen, that fasting and, and the opposite of fast to her was slow. She decided fasting was a little bit too much for her that day. Amen. She wanted to go slower. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, amen. They fasted and prayed. The cattle fasted. The dogs fasted. The goats fasted. The sheep fasted. Praise God. What a time they had. But what a revival they had. The whole place got saved. Amen. It didn't last. Amen. Another prophet had to come along later on and rebuke them and tell them about their judgment day. Amen. Somebody said uh, uh, D.L. Moody's revivals didn't last. And he said a bath don't either, but it's good to take one once in a while. Amen. And uh, hey, sometimes we need to have a revival real often. Sometimes we ha- need to ref- have a refresher course. Can you say amen? In the things of God. Amen. I like that uh, message on the altar, Dennis. Because, praise God, if we make an altar, we've got a chance to get things so far under the blood that when God tells on us, He won't see anything except the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care how bad you've been and how low you've sunk and how much you've done, if you can get it to the altar and get it under the blood, amen, He promised in Ezekiel that it would be forgotten. He'd cast it into the sea. Hallelujah! And some of these days, He's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Amen. The danger is that when we get into rebellion, we justify sin. Now, it's not never healthy to justify sin, but it's always healthy to confess it and forsake it and repent of it. Praise God. Repent quickly. Been listening to the wrong music and the wrong singer. Amen. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Let God wash you. Let God cleanse you. And some sweet day, He'll say, Come, my good and faithful servant, into the joys of the Lord. Well done. Because we found our way to God's altar. All of them could have, but they had too much pride to repent. 
All of them couldn't, but they was too stiff necked to repent. All of them could have, but they wouldn't bend their knees. They wouldn't bow their head. Amen. They wouldn't say the words, God forgive me. If we can say it, He can do it. If we can cry out to God, He'll hear us. Let's stand and let's come around the altar and let's pray tonight. And let's draw an eye to God that He may draw an eye to us. Amen.